Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your handsome host, Bill Miller. Thank you for joining for the final installment of our Top 100 Pre-Code Crime Comics. By 1954, parents, school teachers, clergymen, and others taking an interest in the welfare of children believed comic books were a significant contributor to the epidemic of juvenile delinquency sweeping America. The Comics Magazine Association of America, or CMAA, was formed in September 1954 in response to a widespread public concern over graphic violence and horror imagery in comic books. It named New York Magistrate Charles F. Murphy, a specialist in juvenile delinquency, to head the organization and devise a self-policing code of ethics and standards for the industry. He established the Comics Code Authority, or CCA, basing its code largely upon the unenforced code drafted by the Association of Comics Magazine Publishers in 1948, which in turn had been modeled loosely after the 1940 Hollywood Production Code, also known as the Hayes Code. Now first, the rules. The comics had to have been published prior to carrying the Comics Code Authority seal, and the title had to primarily be a crime title. No photo covers are allowed. Lastly, these are not necessarily either the most popular or the most expensive crime books. They are simply the best crime comic book covers, in my humble opinion. It was a maddening task to rank numbers 20 to 1, but it was a labor of love. I made a series of five videos with 20 entries in each one. So please join me for the last 20 covers as we count down the top 100 pre-code crime comic book covers. starting us off at number 20 is Crime and Punishment, issue number 56, from Love Gleason, published in November of 1952. Sadly, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. Crime and Punishment was a companion title to Crime Does Not Pay. This is a horrific cover. What a demented setup. These gangsters think that their associate double-crossed them and hid some loot. They tied each limb to a bedpost with a knife just below his hovering torso. Clearly, he will eventually tire, his arms won't be able to maintain the tension of the ropes, and he will inch toward the knife. Bootlegging in at number 19 is Gangsters Can't Win, issue number 2, from DS Publishing. Hitting the shelves in April of 1948. Again, the artist is unknown. What a fantastic image. The lady in red is punched by a gangster for having screamed. We have tellers behind iron bars and crooks aplenty. The star of the show, however, is the giant skull within which everything is integrated. Skull covers are a popular subgenre for Golden Age collectors. Putting cement shoes on at number 18 is Law Against Crime, issue number one, from s and K. Produced in April of 1948. The cover artist is L.B. Cole. Again, electric chair covers are very popular among Golden Age comic collectors, and this one is stellar. A beautiful black background with a splash of electric yellow nearly leaping off of the cover. Your entire focus is on the condemned man. Pistol whipping with number 17 is Famous Crimes, issue number 2. From Fox. Hitting the stands in August of 1948. Yet again, we do not know the cover artist. A sexy cover indeed, and one that's high on the list of many collectors. This redhead is halfway between dressed and undressed as her criminal gang pays a visit for a reckoning after she apparently turned informer. 
The detail on the 90 is fantastic. At number 16, we have Lawbreaker Suspense Stories, issue number 11. From Charlton. Out in March of 1953. The cover artist is Lou Morales. A ghastly disturbing image. The lovely ginger woman is only clad in her hastily adorned robe while fearing for her life as the crazed knife-wielding man tells her that he has cut the tongues from everyone else in the building. Such a creepy bone-chilling cover. Throwing Knives at number 15 is Murder Incorporated, issue number 4, from Fox. Printed in July of 1948. We do not know the identity of the cover artist. Hubba and Hubba. We have a woman in a sexy nightgown being blasted by a seedy gangster. Although you see neither blood nor a wound, the cracked dressing mirror is a somber sign that she has been shot. Murdering at number 14 is Crime Mysteries, issue number 2, from Trojan Magazines. In circulation in July of 1952. The cover artist is Alvin Hollingsworth. We have a ginger in a red dress who makes a lovely corpse. The ghoul carrying her has just taken her fresh from a grave with a gun-toting fella on its heels. Perhaps the armed man is the cemetery caretaker. The colors of this book are outstanding, and it has a heavy horror element. Extorting at number 13 is True Crime Comics, issue number 3 from Magazine Village. Printed in July of 1948. The cover artist is Jack Cole. I've been smitten with this cover for a decade or two. We have a gangster riddled by the law of Chicago typewriter, the exit wound spelling out rat. His gun maul has a heater in each hand as she furiously returns fire at the coppers. The dynamic, exaggerated body angles betray Jack Cole's work with Plastic Man. Robbing at number 12 is Fight Against Crime, issue number 20, from Story Comics. Hot off the presses in July of 1954. Unfortunately, we do not know the cover artist. We have a crazed criminal and a blonde in a red dress who has been beheaded. This book isn't nearly as famous as its EC counterpart, but has steadily gained in popularity over the last few years. Strong colors with a heaping helping of gruesome. Billy Clubbing with number 11 is Crime Mysteries, issue number 10, from Trojan Magazine. Seeing print in November of 1953. The cover artist is Myron Fast. I really like this cover. This hood is going to get his comeuppance when he realizes his intended victims just happen to be a werewolf and a vampirus. I love the scratch gray sky and the woman's wonderful striped dress. At number 10 is Crime Does Not Pay, issue number 42, from Lev Gleason. Packaged in November of 1945. The cover artist is Charles Biro. An absolutely brilliant cover. The composition is incredible. A gangster is blazing away against the law with a bit of foreshadowing. His shadow portends a future date with the electric chair. Rich primary colors and a big harvest moon add to the moody ambiance. Machine gunning at number nine is crime must pay the penalty. 
Issue number 30 from Ace Magazines. Available in February of 1953. Alas, the cover artist is unknown. Not on a lot of radars, but this is one of my favorite covers. The detail on the pinstripe suits, the heavy overcoats, the leather satchel, and the blazing gun. The colors are vivid, but the Halloween mask disguises are the true cherry on the top. Rum running with number eight is Crime Mysteries, issue number four. From Trojan Magazine. Published in November of 1952. We do not know the identity of the cover artist. A lot of horror elements within this crime comic. We have a mad scientist, a lovely soulless victim in a smart green dress who seems to be in bondage, and a random skull for good measure. The purple backdrop is great, but the most lurid part is the blood being siphoned from our damsel in distress. At number seven is Crime Does Not Pay, issue number 24, from Lev Gleason. Hitting the shelves in November of 1942. The cover art is by Charles Biro. A very famous cover. This is a rough image and from 1942. As a copper arrives at the window, he witnesses a brute forcing a woman's head onto a gas stove burner. Her hair is ablaze, and in his first appearance, Mr. Crime is gleefully watching the madness unfold. Brass Knuckling with number six is Crime Suspense Stories, issue number 17. From E.C. Produced in June of 1953. The cover art is by Johnny Craig. Such an incredible violent cover. A distraught man commits suicide by a gunshot to the head as his wife looks on. As graphic as that is, what makes it even more unsavory is the replay of the scene in the vanity mirror. At number five, we have the perfect crime. Issue number 23 from Cross. Hitting the stands in April of 1952. Unfortunately, the cover artist is unknown. Another fantastic cover with pre-code horror overtones. For some reason, the trade dress against the green and white wallpaper gives this book a timeless feel, as if it could have been published in the 80s. The scene stealer of this cover is the mirrored reflection of the slavering attack. Extorting at number four is Underworld Crime, issue number seven, from Fawcett. Out in September of 1953. Although we're not certain, the cover artist is believed to be Ed Ash. An incredibly frightening cover. A blonde in bondage is held by the hair and threatened with a red-hot poker. The scene is crafted so well. Her assailants look menacing and deadly serious. The look on her face is one of agonizing terror. Her paramour is tied up in the background with a look of helpless shock. The colors are vibrant without being garish. Threatening at number three is Thrilling Crime Cases, issue number 49, from Star Publications. In circulation in July of 1952. The cover art is by L.B. Cole. This is perhaps the prettiest cover in the entire countdown. This is some of Cole's finest work. The beautiful yet deadly woman in the center of the image is framed by a wonderful helter-skelter of images, all contributing to the visual story. The colors are superb and the trade dress is fantastic. Doing hard time with number two is Crime Suspense Stories, issue number 16, 
from EC. Hot off the presses in April of 1953. The cover artist is Johnny Craig. This is such a tremendous cover. The more I see it, the more I like it. Everything works with this image, from the angle of the crazed man's approach to the strong primary colors to the berserk look in the attacker's eyes. It almost looks as if he is rushing from the book at the viewer. Masterful. And coming in at number one is Crime Suspense Stories, issue number 22. From EC. Available in April of 1954. Again, the cover artist is Johnny Craig. Could there be any other book sitting at the top of the list? This one is the Creme de la Creme. The most famous decapitation cover in all of comicdom. Simple, impactful, lurid, without being too gory. The framing is wonderful, from the placement of the body in relation to the head to the killer's position relative to the body. The axe looks to be bloody. Blood seems to be dripping from the victim's mouth. The hair is taut, as her head is held aloft, but not so high as to see her neck. The scene is crafted in such a way as to allow the viewer to complete it and subsequently add the gore with your own imagination. And that will do it for numbers 20 through 1 as we finish counting down the top 100 pre-code crime comics. I hope you enjoyed the series and I hope you got to see some books you either haven't seen before or haven't seen in quite some time. Please leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. Do I have some ranked too high or too low? Were there some that should have made the list but didn't? I'd love to hear your feedback and don't forget to join me for the next series as we count down the top 100 pre-code jungle comics.